Hello guys, uh, you're welcome to this channel and for my subscriber, thanks for coming back again to watch our videos and if you are yet to subscribe and you are a new viewer, please click on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it, that will notify you when we drop our new video. In this video we will talk about the NECO 2022 uh, Chemistry Practical Titration, so we want to look at the likely question and possibly that would appear us very very well ahead of the exam. So I'm going to show up the question now and then we go about doing the practical so then we came on to things that would help us massively in the exam. So let's look at the question. Let's go through the question like we used to do in every of our videos. Uh, we have A is a solution containing 4.73 gram of HNO3 in 500 centimeter cube of water, which means uh, we are given the 4.73 gram of uh, HNO3 in one tm, sorry, in 500 centimeter cube of water. So this implies that we are going to have times two of these parts in one tm cube. Let's note that. Put Sorry, B is a solution of Na2CO3, that's sodium trisulfate 4, that's B. Then we are told to follow this procedure, put A into the red and titrate against 20 or 25 centimeter cube of B using methyl orange as an indicator. And mind you, you know that we have a HNO3 as the acid and it's a strong acid, while sodium trisulfate 4 is weak. Base. So, methylorane is a good indicator for surge titration. So, um, using methylorane indicator, we're going to detect the end point of the reaction. Then, repeat the procedure for consistent value. We repeat this procedure for consistent value of Tyka. So, then after that, tabulate the reading and determine the average volume of A used. So, after tabulating uh, our readings, we determine the average volume of A used. Then thereafter, we are told to solve some questions from our result, like concentration of B in mole per dm cube. We are meant to determine that from our result. Concentration of B in gram per dm cube. We are also told to determine that. And we are also told to find the concentration of A in gram per dm cube. So all this we are going to do now. And mind you, this is our table. So let us start the experiment, get our volumes of A, and then calculate what we have left in the question. So let's go back to the question. Okay, um, let us kick start the experiment now. Um, as you can see, we have a solution A here. This is solution A, and I think solution A, the content has been stated in the question. Then we also have solution B. So we have a solution B here, and the content has also been stated in the question. Uh, we have the conical flask, we have our indicator here, then the funnel of which you are going to use to put your A into the bullet. And this is the bullet and here. So we're going to start the experiment now. And mind you, you cannot find anything here because I actually use a ball bearing. So the ball bearing is also an alternative to the pin because those pins get uh, time as in, with time they get rust. So let's move on. And this is the steel water in case of in case city or probably you are meant to rinse any of these glasswares you're using. So now uh, let's talk about the procedures you need to follow. I mean the precautions or, or to obtain accurate result. You need to rinse this with water so it won't contain sorry rinse it with water here yeah. in order not to contain more than the solution is meant to contain. If I rinse it with the content that is supposed to be there, definitely I have increased the volume automatically. So then you rinse the pipettes. Sorry, let me have the pipettes. You rinse the pipettes with you rinse the pipette with the solution is meant to contain, and that has been done already. So you rinse it with B so that it will not be diluted further by the time you rinse it water and then use it in pipetting your B. So the B won't be diluted further. So then you use uh, A to rinse the burette because it's meant to be contained in the burette. So you use it to just the same reason why we use uh, B to rinse the pipette. So and that has been done already. So I'm then rinse this with water. Then whenever you fill in the burette, ensure you remove 
the funnel. So it won't keep popping up in the red for a white decoration goes on. So and ensure that you place a white tile or a white paper that will make you detect the change in color easily under the uh, conical flask. So now let's start the experiments. We are going to fill up the, the pipette, I mean the burette now, and then pipette and then start the experiment. Okay? So let's go by doing that. We are doing three consistent title uh, uh, what's called uh, titration. So let's start by pipetting B into the conical flask. So let's do that now. Okay, is there a ring? And please, once the pipette finishes discharging its content, do not blow, probably because there is still a few drops there. The, the pipette is designed to discharge exactly the volume of which you are using, and that is 25. So this is 25 centimeter cube, so you don't need to blow it. If you have done that, which means you have increased the volume beyond 25. So now let us have add our indicator. Um, and we expect in color yellow at this point. Okay. This is yellow in color, as you can see. So the color is yellow now. So then we titrate and we expecting change in color to what? To pink. So now let us fill in and make, make sure when you want to fill the red, this one is away from it in case there will be any drop of the, uh, the content of A. So that it won't type, it won't start the titration before you eventually start. Actually, I've put a little of A into this, so let me just adjust to zero. So I remove my funnel and then adjust the solution. Then adjust the solution. Two, zero. Okay, good. No? Alright, good. It's right there on zero. So now we can start the experiment. So let's keep hydrating now and see the response. Okay? You have to be very careful at the first titration. So that you can easily detect any color change. Okay, I think the color has changed. Okay, still remain a bit. Yeah. From yellow, it has actually changed to okay. Yeah, we have seen the color change now. So I'm, I can see it very well here. I don't know about what you see here. It's a slight pink color. So, and immediately there is a color change, then the diffusion has ended. So, but this is no more yellow. It's no more yellow. So, now, I will record that. And what I have here is 13.1. So I record that my initial reading is uh, 0 on 0, 0. So I'm going to record 13 on 1, 0. Today. And make, make sure that all your progress reading is in two decimal places. Of which when I subtract the initial from final, I'm going to have 13 on 1, 0 as well. So I'm, I can continue the titration without refilling the red back to 0. I can actually continue the titration because um, I can still see more of 13. In fact, I can see 13 in three places in uh, 50 so I don't need to I think one bread will be enough for three titration so now let's move on so I can actually rinse that with water again then proceed to the second titration so this is my solution B let me quite that again okay now, we go for the second titration. 
Yeah. So, sorry, I didn't put my indicator. I forgot to do that. So then let's add it. So now I've gotten this. So now let's move. Oh, same thing happened. So the color has changed again. So then, and this time around we have 26 points. 26 points. 26 points. Two. Okay. We have 26 points. Two. And don't forget our initial reading here now will be the end the uh, volume of A is here, and that is 13.10. So and the final reading is 26 points. Two zero. So by the time I subtract this, I'm going to have eighteen point one zero. Oh, wow! Well, exactly the same. So now let's go for the last titration. Don't forget that I have to rinse with water again. Okay. Good. So there again, I had my indicator. So this is it. Now, I think the color has changed and we have, uh, we have 30, this is 39 dots, 39 dots. So now, initial reading here is going to be what? Uh, 26 or 2, 0. So then I have 39 or 0, 0. So by the time we subtract this, what are we going to have? We're going to have uh, that is 13.2. 13.2 straight away. 13.2 zero. So that is the end of the three titration. So now let's go ahead. Let's go to the board to determine our average volume of title and then the rest of the calculation. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Um, now we are going to calculate our VA, which is the average volume of acid used. So and to do that. Uh, we add three values of the title, that is volume of A used in three of them, divided divide by three. So by doing that, I got 13.13. So this means our VA is what? 13.13 centimeter cubed. So having done that, the next thing is to go for the remaining calculation. Now, we are going to calculate the concentration of uh, B in mole per dm cube and concentration of B in gram per dm cube and at the same time concentration of A in gram per D in mole per dm cube. Don't forget we're given we're given the mass of uh, A dissolved in 500 centimeter cube of water rather to be uh, four point uh, four point seven three yeah four point seven three. So that's 4.73. That is what we're given. But uh, let's start with the first question: concentration of B in mole per kg. Don't forget that the equation of the reaction is N 
A to CO3 plus HNO3. And that gives us, um, we're going to have Na, NO3, that is 2, plus we're going to have uh, H2O plus CO2. So, having gotten this, so the next thing is for us to have balance the equation, I think it's balanced now. So then, number of mole of A is 2, while number of mole of B is 1, according to the equation. So using CA, VA, over CB, VB, I have equals NA over NB. And mind you, we are looking for CB, and we are yet to know the concentration of what? A, that is CA. So which means we have to find CA before we could get our CB because without CA we cannot use this. I'm sorry, I didn't record the volume of the pipette at the top of the table and that is BB is supposed to be 25 and 0 centimeter cube. Note that. Note that, but that's the volume of the pipette. So now the next thing for us to do is that we have our BB to be 25.0 centimeter cube. And our VA now is what? 13.13 cm3. So, in this case, what next? Let's look for CA. And to find CA, we are told that uh, 4.73 gram is dissolved in 500 cm3. Good. So, which means X gram will be dissolved in 1000. So, by the time we Cancel uh, two zeros here. I'm going to have 5 over 10, that is actually 0 0.5. So I'm going to have a 4.73 gram over x equals 0 0.5. So which means 0, are you there? 0 0.5 x will be equal to 4.73 gram. So by the time we divide both sides, that means x will be, and don't forget, x is the mass of A that is present in 1 dm cube. So which means I'm going to have uh, 4.73 divided by 0 0.5 and that will actually give us that is 9.545 or there about so 4.73 divided by 0 0.5 so that is 9.46 so we have 9.46 gram in 1 dm cube. So this is the mass concentration, don't forget Mass concentration to so X equals mass concentration of A. So we are going to put that in 9.46 gram per dm cube. So I think we get this 9.46 gram per dm So the next thing for us to do is what? Is to determine the molar concentration of A. So to, to determine the molar concentration of A, we use uh, molar concentration is equal to which is what C A. Now, will be equals to okay. Let's adjust the camera for you to see well. So, is equal to what mass concentration over molar mass. So to get that, that is C A will now be equal to mass concentration is what nine point four six. Over molar mass, then we know that H A is HNO3, so that is 1 plus 14 plus 16 times 3. So which means I'm gonna have 9.46 over this is 15 plus 48. It's good. So and that is 63. 63. So 9.46 divided by 63 we give CA equals 0 0.150 mole per dm cube so that is our concentration of A that is CA which means we have actually solved the question 3 of the procedure of the question now we are going back to question 1 and question 2 now so now let's go over to question 1 
by solving of our CA, VA in order to get CB. Good. So now, to do that now, I have uh, CA to be 0 0.15 times VA which is 13.13 like I've said, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah. 0 0.15 times 13.13 times, oh, uh, that's CA, VA over CB. Now, CB is what? CB is what we are looking for, CB times VB, which is 25, all in plus 2 over 1. So by doing that, we need to have, by multiplying this, we have 50 CB equals 0 0.150 times 13.13. So all times 1 will still give me 1.96. Nine five. Actually, put that for this one, please. So CB will be what? One point nine six nine five over fifty. So CB will actually be equals to this divided by fifty. So and that is zero point zero four approximately in mole per DMQ. So that is our half. CB. So after getting after getting our CB, the next thing is to look for concentration of B in gram per DM. And to find that, we use this same formula. So concentration of B in gram per DMQ, we have to restate the formula and say mass concentration of B. That is mass concentration of B is equal to what molarity of B. That is molar concentration times molar mass of B. So which means we are going to have molarity of B which we have just calculated 0 0.04 times molar mass of B and that is 106. That is 106, so 106. So by multiplying these two we have 0 0.04 times 106. So and that gives us 4.24 gram per dm cubed. So that is the mass concentration of B. And that marks the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's free. Thank you.